Like, I, don't, I didn't mean for it to sound that good. <laughs> it's like, what? How, how did I do that? But then, you know, that's great. That's where the magic is. You know, it's just for me, it's about instinct and, and being spontaneous. And uh, I like combinations of sounds and creating kind of hybrids. So, you know, there may be, I don't know, just things like, you know, putting a putting a imaginary lineup in my head, like a, you know, like bass synthesizer, you know, drum kit and string quartet or something. I kind of have these, these ideas of a sound. Uh, but it really, it always changes, you know, through the weeks or, you know, through the process of writing the album. I kind of, I tend to put a lot of things in and throw things at it and then there'll be a point where I kind of start pulling it away and um, making it more focused. But you know, I don't know. I don't know what the sound of it is. It's good. <laughs> I used to have this, this studio in the basement um, level of my house to sort of spread across three rooms. And then, I don't know, I did two records down there and then I kind of just felt a little bit kind of hemmed in, a bit kind of closed in. And so I brought all the equipment up to the first floor of the house and took over the living room and some of the hallways. And so now kind of things are creeping into the, you know, so this is like a synthesizer in the kitchen. And so, you know, my wife and kids are kind of like, well, you know, Gaz, there's another drum kit in the uh, in the uh, in the dining room. It's like, what's going on? And it was recorded sort of half at my house and half at another studio uh, over in Oxford. So I do like a week or two at my place, kind of unload ideas, kind of go crazy, and then yeah, when I start to sort of feel a bit mad and you know argue with myself. And, bang my head against the wall. Then I go to this other studio where I had a friend, Ian Davenport, who was a co-producer. So then we'd sort of shape things a bit more and, and work on my ideas. And then I go back to mine again to do more of the stream of conscious thing. And so I kind of keep swapping between them. There was a moment on, I had a, I've got a track called Slow Motion Life, which is on this album, and, and for a long time it was just a piano song. And then I went away during the summer of 2017, and I took the recordings with me, but I planned to not really listen to it much. I wanted to escape the record and have some space. But I was just kind of swimming around, and, and I had the, the, the demos playing, or the early record playing. I don't know, I just heard I heard the outro of the song just kind of in the air around me. It sounds kind of weird, but I don't know, just with the kind of water and the birds and the wind, and I just sort of heard this like cacophony of sound over the piano. And I just sort of got out of the pool and just started writing down like what I was gonna do to create this kind of chaotic, kind of velvet underground sort of heroin style chaos and stuff. And it was, it was really, I thought that was a beautiful moment. That was kind of like, it's kind of like it was given to me, you know, this idea was sort of handed to me by, by Mother Nature. Um, my favourite piece of equipment, I, I mean, there's, there's a few things. My Prophet 5 synthesizer is, is kind of like my baby. That's like, I've had it for years. I, I think I bought it in the late 90s. And it was even, I mean, we used it on a few Supergrass records as well, but it, I just hadn't, it's just such a great synthesizer because it's there's so much to it that you can explore, you know. So I still feel even now I'm finding sounds on it that, that I didn't know I could get. We used it on the Life on Other Planets actually quite a bit. In fact, there's a song called Prophet 15, I think, which was it was a sound that we got on that synthesizer that, that kicked off the whole track. I use it a bit differently now, maybe more for bass synth sounds and. And also, it's a, it's a little bit broken, so uh, none of the patches work, so you can't save any sounds on the patches. Um, so every time you turn it on, it goes to sort of factory reset, <laughs> which is really cool, because it's like, basically, when you turn it on, it's factory reset, you press, press a key and nothing happens. So then you start sort of messing around, it's like, oh, there's a sound, I've got something. And then, and then it just, so I don't know, I, I like that as well, that kind of challenge 
of um, having to start again each time I turn it on. Yeah, I tend to listen to music on vinyl on my record player a lot. I've got all my vinyl in my studio, kind of in shelves, and then I'll kind of siphon off 10 or 15 albums and put them in another box over in the kitchen where the record player is. And, and then I keep sort of swapping those 10 over for new ones and keep refreshing the listening experience. But, um, but I think now for the new generation, I think they're just really attractive, really good looking pieces, you know, and um, I think even a lot of kids probably buy vinyl and they don't have a record player. You know, it's the kind of put it up on the wall kind of thing. It's great for us kind of artists that, and musicians that I guess the kids are really into vinyl because we, we really like releasing on vinyl. You know, when you're kind of working on the artwork and, the, and, the, and all the kind of inner artwork, it, it sort of makes so much more sense with the vinyl format. You know, and then when I have to go into the CD format, it's everything, it's like, why is everything so small?